Hello, and welcome to this first look at Windows Small Business Server 7, an all-in-one server solution designed and priced for small businesses. SBS 7 is a comprehensive solution that helps provide increased data and network protection, enables users to be more productive, helps to simplify IT administration, and provides remote access from virtually anywhere that you have a broadband connection to the Internet. Today I'd like to give you a quick overview of SBS 7, starting with the Administration Console, which is the Command and Control Center for SBS networks. On the home page, we can see on the right an all-up summary of the health of our server environment, including the security, updates, backup, and other alert status that affect the health of the computers and servers that are joined to the SBS 7 domain. On the left-hand side, we can see a number of tasks that are necessary to complete as you get started with SBS 7, including, of course, some help, a wizard that will enable you to connect your server to the Internet, another wizard that helps you set up your Internet address, and another wizard that will help you add a trusted SSL certificate to your server to make it simple to establish encrypted connections from the Internet to your SBS server. Checkboxes are provided for your convenience as a to-do list that you can check off as you complete the different tasks. Next is the Users and Groups tab. Here you can see and manage all of the users in your network. On the right we can see a number of tasks that are appropriate for all users in the environment. We can also select an individual user and get more detailed tasks. This functionality is present throughout the Administration Console and makes it very easy as you perform individual tasks to find the right functionality quickly and easily. Users can also be grouped together in both distribution groups for email as well as security groups that can be used to control access to resources such as shared folders. You can even define user roles which are like templates that you can use when creating new accounts to give them all the same account properties. Here you can see I've added a sales user role in addition to the default roles. Next is the Network tab. Here we can see all the servers and computers in the network. And again, if we click on an individual computer, we can see specific tasks for that computer. Let's view the computer properties. Here we can see some general information about this PC we can also configure which users have access to it from remote locations. As an example, Kevin Brown has access to his PC, as does Roland, the network administrator. We can also see what access level each user has to the computer itself. Administrators always have local administrator access, but we can choose whether Kevin is a local administrator or a standard user on his computer. We can also, from the Devices sub-tab, manage the faxes and printers in our network. And on the Connectivity sub-tab, we can view and manage the way that our server is connected to the Internet, including configuring the Internet domain name, viewing our web server certificate, or viewing the firewall status and configuration for the server itself. The next tab is the Shared Folders and Websites tab, where we can see the different network locations that users can store their information centrally on the file server. This is one of the key benefits for helping protect data in your network by putting it in a centralized location. In fact, this also is a great way to help users be more pro productive as they can now more easily find the information that they need. On the Websites sub-tab, we can view the websites that are part of SBS 7, including the Remote Web Workspace, as well as the email Outlook web access and the internal website based on Microsoft SharePoint Foundation 2010. The next tab shows us the backup and server storage. Again, we have general backup tasks in the task pane, but as we select an individual backup, we can see additional tasks related to that backup. There's also a server storage sub-tab, which will show us the physical drives on the server as well as being able to see exactly what data is being stored on those different drives. 
We can see here that I've moved the Exchange server data over to a new data drive that I've added to the server. By default, the system drive contains all of the data for our server, but we can easily move these to new drives using the wizards in the task pane. On the Reports tab, we can see the default reports that show us the health and status of the server. By default, there's a summary report that is run daily and also a detailed network report that is run weekly. Let's view the properties of the detailed report. We can customize various aspects of the report, including what content is included in the report, whether or not the report is emailed once it's created, and to whom the report is sent. We can adjust the schedule for when the report is generated, and we can also view the archives to see past history of the health of our server. The final tab is the security tab, which gives us an all-up view for the clients and servers in our network so that we can see at a glance whether all client computers have virus protection, whether they also have spyware and other malware protection, whether client computers have their firewall turned on, whether the server has spam protection for email, and whether or not the server's firewall is turned on. The update subtab also lets us view and change properties of how updates are applied in our network. Let's take a look at the software update settings. Here we can see that server updates are set to medium, while client updates are set to high. This makes sure that all clients automatically approve for installation, security, critical, and virus definition updates, and all service packs. We can also adjust the schedule and determine whether updates are installed automatically or simply downloaded and have the administrator be notified that there are updates available. As you can see on the clients, we are automatically installing updates every day at 3 a.m. Now let's take a look at a client computer and how we can add additional computers into the SBS domain. Here we can see a Windows 7 professional client that's part of a peer-to-peer -peer network just in a work group. We can also see that the desktop has been customized and there are some shortcuts on the desktop that we don't want to lose when we move this computer into the SBS domain. It's very quick and easy to do this and of course there's a wizard to make it easier. Simply open up a web browser and enter the connect URL. From this page we can start the connect computer wizard. The wizard can be run either by the computer's user or by the administrator if they are setting up a, a computer on a user's behalf. Let's go ahead and set this computer up as a normal user. Once the client computer has been verified to meet the requirements for joining the SBS domain, we simply enter in the credentials of the user and provide a name for this computer. At this point, we can also choose whether or not to migrate a local user profile. Once the Connect Computer Wizard has finished, we can see the computer show up back in the SBS7 console. Let's go back to the client and look at remote web access and see how users and administrators can connect to and access the server from virtually anywhere that they have a broadband internet connection. We can also see that even after the computer has been joined to the SBS domain, the same wallpaper, desktop shortcuts, and documents have been migrated over for this user's profile. Let's open a web browser and connect to the remote web access portal. From here, we can apply our user credentials to sign in to the portal. I'm going to sign in as the network administrator so that we can see all of the options. For those of you who are familiar with previous versions of Windows Small Business Server, you can see that the remote web access has been significantly enhanced. We're able to check our email, connect to our intranet company website, connect to servers and computers in the network, but we can also now see and access shared folders. Let's take a closer look at this. Here we can see we have a very simple 
easily navigatable interface to view our shared folders as well as our documents. This makes it very easy to upload, download, and access information that's stored on the server just using a web browser. Back on the home page, we can also go ahead and check our email remotely. As you can see, the Microsoft Outlook web app included with Exchange Server 2010 provides a very rich email experience that's very similar to the client experience that you have running Office 2010. Of course, we can see our inbox and our email. We can also view our calendar, look at our contacts, see tasks, and public folders. Let's go back to the Remote Web Access Portal and take a look at the new intranet website based on SharePoint Foundation 2010. Again, if you're familiar with previous versions of Windows Small Business Server, you can see that this has been greatly enhanced and adds a lot more functionality, making it very easy for users to increase their productivity and collaborate more effectively with other employees. Let's take a look at the Shared Documents folder and look at some of the new enhancements of the library tools, giving you a very rich ribbon-like user interface to interact with libraries on the server. Of course, we can still create team calendars, tasks, and discussion groups. One of the best things about the Remote Web Access Portal is the ability to connect to computers within the network itself. For administrators, you can easily connect to the server to perform remote administration. And for individual users, it's easy to connect to their desktops in their workplace, whether they're on the road, at home, or at a client's site, to gain access to specific applications, to documents that are stored on their desktop PCs, or just to use their computer as if they were sitting in front of it. We can also customize the Remote Web Access Portal with specific links for the administrator, as well as organizational links that all the users can see. We can even move stuff around to customize it so that we can see exactly what's most important to us. So that's a quick first look at Windows Small Business Server 7, and we can see during the course of this demo, we actually received a security alert. Let's go ahead and check that out. Right from the home page, we can jump to the security tab and see right away that the virus protection for the client file system is missing. We have one of our computers that suddenly doesn't have virus protection, which of course is the new computer that we just added. So we can see right away very dynamically that we have an issue that we need to proactively address before it becomes a problem in our network. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at SBS 7. Again, really focused on providing an all-in-one solution for those small businesses, really enabling them to increase and enhance their data protection to help simplify IT operations, allow users to be more productive, and to enable them to access their information from anywhere that they have a broadband internet connection. Thank you very much.